Well, good Tuesday morning to you. Um, it's looking again a little overcast from all that. The fire's coming in, so we're not. I got a little sun coming up, but uh, looks nice out there now. But she's going to be a hot one again. So stay cool today. Uh, find some place. Stay hydrated. Stay stay uh, safe today in whatever you're doing. Um, we are in Proverbs. Uh, chapter 11 today and as we get started <clears throat> I wanted to just yesterday at work I had pulled up um, some music to listen to and years and years and years ago a long time ago um, I had come across a Grateful Dead album and um, I'm not a huge Grateful Dead fan but this particular album they covered um, several country songs and Chuck Berry and Buddy Holly and uh, it was just kind of a neat album and I was in the mood to listen to it yesterday so I did and uh, <clears throat> coming across one of the songs they did in the album uh, was Mama Tried and most of you would know Mama Tried from Merle Haggard um, but I'm listening to that song and kind of singing along and all of a sudden I go hey that's Proverbs. That's exactly what, what Solomon's trying to teach us. Uh, the second verse of the song in the chorus goes, When an only rebel child from a family meek and mild, Mama seemed to know what lay in store, despite all my Sunday learning, towards the bad I kept on turning and Mama couldn't hold me anymore. I turned 21 in prison doing life without parole, no one could steer me right, but Mama tried, Mama tried. Mama tried to raise me better, but her pleading I denied. That leaves only me to blame, because Mama tried. That is Proverbs. That's what Solomon's trying to get through to us. Uh, there's a right way to live and a wrong way to live. And... Yeah, in that song, Merle Haggard is sharing that this young man had Sunday learning. He had a mom who was pleading for him, and he just continued to ignore her and kept turning towards the bad. And eventually, he got uh, what was coming to him. He's in prison at the age of 21. I just, I hope as you're uh, going through your day, things like that will click for you. You'll hear something, you'll see something, you'll go, hey, wait a second. That, we, we've been learning about that in Proverbs or even back to the psalm, you know, whatever it might be. Um, there is a connection between this ancient book and our everyday life. And uh, it might even come through a song to remind us, but there's truth there. So, Proverbs 11 today. Uh, the Lord detests the use of dishonest scales, but he delights in accurate weights. God wants us to run an honest business, plain and simple. Um, don't cut corners, don't cheat people to make a profit, uh, run an honest business. Pride leads to disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. Um, again, pride comes before the fall. Uh, we uh, boast and get big-headed and eventually someone's going to come along who can do things better than us and quicker than us or whatever. It's humility um, that, that brings us wisdom. We understand our place. We understand where our gifts come from. Uh, we don't boast in our talents because they're not ours. They're from God. Uh, honesty guides good people. Dishonesty destroys treacherous people. Again, Mama tried. She tried to raise her son uh, with honesty, but he chose the bad path, dishonesty, and ends up in prison. Um, four through ten. Riches won't help on the day of judgment, but right living can save you from death. The godly are directed by dishonesty. The wicked fall beneath their load of sin. The godliness of good people rescues them. The ambition of treacherous people traps them. When the wicked die, their hopes die with them, for they rely on their own uh, feeble strength. The godly are rescued from trouble,
but it falls on the wicked instead. With their words, the godless destroy their friends, but knowledge will rescue the righteous. The whole city celebrates when the godly succeed. They shout for joy when the wicked die. Again, you have your choices uh, to live right and good or to live bad and suffer. Um, your riches aren't going to save you on Judgment Day. Uh, you, can't, you can't pay God off or buy God off. Um, uh, you got to you gotta live righteously. <clears throat> um, when the wicked die, their hopes die with them for they rely on their own strength. Um, when you trust in yourself and your power and your own goodness and your own greatness, you're separated from God, not only in this world, but in the world to come. Uh, not a good place to be. And finally, the whole city celebrates when the godly succeed. They shout for joy when the wicked die. Um, again, the today we would today we would think, man, there's a lot of wickedness in our world, and it seems to be wicked is winning. But again, there still is a rebellion. They're just rebelling down in Cuba a couple weeks ago for freedom. They're tired of the wickedness and the the suppression of their leader. Um, they just flipped a a clip up the other day back to when we went into Iraq and took out Saddam Hussein and the people were cheering in the streets. They were throwing parties when he was gone. Um, people know what righteousness is and they're longing for that and they're longing for that in their leaders. Uh, verse 11, upright citizens are good for a city and make it prosper, but the talk of wicked tears it apart. Um, Boy, again, you can just look at our world today, our own country today, as, as we're fighting back and forth. And we look at each side as wicked, and it's not that they're wicked necessarily, but the selfishness and the, the self-centeredness, the pride, the inability to work together um, is just, it's tearing us apart. Um, th that we need to come back to the godly principles of our... Of our uh, of our word here to help us get together. Uh, it's 12, it's foolish to be, to be little one's neighbors. A sensible person keeps quiet. A gossip goes around telling secrets, but those who are trustworthy can keep a confidence. Um, don't talk bad about your neighbors. Uh, there's a time to keep quiet. It's interesting. Again, we talked about that a little bit yesterday. A sensible person keeps quiet. We have two, two ears and one mouth for a reason. Uh, and sometimes it's just better to not say anything. And certainly somebody who goes around gossiping, uh, talking about other people, um, they are not trustworthy. And so um, one of the commentators said that's a good way to find out if you got friends or not. If you share something with them and the next thing you know everybody else knows about it, you don't want to share anything with them again. Uh, because they're not going to keep your confidence. They're not trustworthy. Um, so uh, remember, we can keep quiet. Uh, without wise leadership, a nation falls. There is safety in having many advisors. Again, uh, we need good leadership. We need good wisdom. And unfortunately, what both what everybody's doing is circling the wagons around their own ideology rather than uh, working together and getting good ideas from uh, both sides of the aisle and compromising and figuring out what's right for our country. Uh, we're selfish and uh, we might have advisors, but there's not safety when you're hearing the same, the same point of view over and over and over. When you surround yourself with people who agree with you, that's not the way to do it. Uh, you need to be challenged with other thoughts to get other ideas. So there's a good leadership for all. Uh, verse 15, there's danger in putting up security for a stranger's debt. It's safer not to guarantee another person's debt. We covered that in Proverbs 6. Um, you don't want to put yourself in that situation. In fact, Solomon says get out of that situation as quick as you can. Um, so um, 16, a gracious woman gains respect, but ruthless men gain only wealth. See here, your kindness will reward you, but your cruelty will destroy you. Evil people get rich for the moment, 
but the reward of the godly will last. Godly people find life, evil people find death. The Lord detests people with crooked hearts, but he delights in those with integrity. Evil people will surely be punished, but the children of the godly will go free. So again, um, you can look for respect or you can look for wealth. Um, you can have both, but uh, it's what you're pursuing. It's what you're after. Um, you can be kind or you can be cruel. Um, you can get rich for the moment, for this life, or you can be godly and it will last forever and eternity. You can find life by following God's ways, or you can find death by following evil's ways. Um, the Lord detests people with crooked hearts. He wants us to be honest. He wants us to be caring, good, generous, upright, a people of integrity. Um, he, he wants us to be people that can be counted on. That's how he created us. Evil people, uh, they will be punished. And we look at today and we go, wow, when is it going to happen, God? When are you going to do it? God will balance the scales. Uh, if not in this life, certainly in the life to come. And that will be far more important then than it is now. So um, God's children will go free. We go free because of what Jesus has done for us. And it's not free to do whatever we want to do. It's not free to be uh, selfish and self-centered. It's free to be who we are in Christ but we will live free in eternity because of what Jesus has done for us. <clears throat> Verse 22, a beautiful woman uh, who lacks discretion is like a gold ring in a pig's snout. Um, yeah, we, I can't remember where we were the other day, but somebody was walking along and I thought, wow, she thinks she is all that in a bag of chips. <laughs> uh, she was making sure that everybody saw her and uh, yeah. Solomon says you might as well put a gold ring in a pig's snout and a pig rolls around in the mud and the dirt and uh, not the pet you want in your house. Um, that's, that's not the image that you want to portray as a woman. The godly can look forward to a reward, but the wicked can expect only judgment. Um, that's kind of the verses four through nine that what were, and it's mama tried. You can look forward to a reward in heaven, uh, by paying attention to your Sunday learning, or you're going to keep turning bad, and you can end up in prison and separated from God for eternity. So, um, 24, give freely and become more wealthy, be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. People curse those who hoard their grain, but bless the ones who who sells it in time of need. Give freely, be stingy. Uh, where are you at? Um, are you a penny pincher? You worry about where every penny goes, and it's not that we're not supposed to be good stewards of our money, but how are you sharing your blessings? How are you being a blessing uh, to others? How are you helping to, to meet others' needs? Um, in fact, God says if you're generous, you will, in fact, uh, become more wealthy. Um, the gentleman that we, pastor that we knew, said you can't outgive God. So, again, it's not that we're, we're dumb with our money or it's not that we're not good stewards, but we, we don't be, we're not stingy. We're generous. We're there to help people. Um, the generous will prosper, and those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Um, it's better to give than to receive. How many times have, have you actually given something and you see the smile on somebody's face and you actually uh, get the joy and the strength uh, and the, the, jo the joy that comes from that? So <clears throat> check your heart and see where you're at. And uh, if you search for good, he says in verse 27, you will find favor. But if you search for evil, it will find you. Um, so what are you searching for? What are you looking for? And examine your heart. Make sure it's not good in your sight, but it's good in God's sight. And again, I'm just hearing Mama try it over and over here uh, this morning. Uh, trust in your money and down you go.
but the godly flourish like leaves in the spring. What are you putting your trust in? Again, money is a blessing. Money is a good thing that God gives us, but is that what you're putting your trust in? Um, it, it's either in God or it's in money. It can't be in both. So uh, verse 29, those who bring trouble on their families inherit the wind. The fool will be a servant to the wise. The seeds of good deeds become a tree of life. A wise person wins friends. Um, when you bring trouble on your life, uh, your whole family is going to suffer. Uh, and the fool says will be a servant to the wise. Uh, the fool will end up working for the wise person. And it doesn't mean because you're working for somebody that you're, that you're a fool. But it's just that that's what's going to end up happening when you can't do things right or correctly or what you're going to end up being the slave, in fact, of someone else. The seeds of good deeds become the tree of life. Um, I think of every once in a while you'll hear this, uh, you'll hear the story of someone who goes through a drive up and they say, I'm paying for the people behind me. Well, that person comes up and goes, whoa, well, I'm going to pay for the person behind me. And that thing will go on for hours sometimes. That seed that you plant, it just it just continues to grow and it just helps other people. Um, it brings out a generosity and it brings out a joy of giving and passing on. So it becomes a tree of life. Um, a wise person wins friends. <clears throat> the actual original says those who wins those who win souls are wise so um it's not only as planting seeds but it's helping others find their eternal life in jesus um that's where joy the ultimate joy will come for us and for them so he finishes up if the righteous are rewarded here on earth what will happen to wicked sinners uh sometimes the wicked suffer like in Mama Tried at 21, serving life without parole. Other times it appears that the wicked um, succeed in this life. But God will balance the scales. There will be a judgment. And the godly uh, will be rewarded here on earth for their goodness, but they're also going to be rewarded in eternity. The wicked will be punished, and we don't have to worry about that. Um, our main concern needs to be are we paying attention to our Sunday learning? Are the words of the Proverbs leading us on the right way? Are we, pack, are we, are we choosing the right path? Um, that's what we need to be focused on, not worrying about how the wicked will be taken care of or punished, but making sure that we are being the people that God's created us to be. So let's pray for that today. Uh, Father, would you... <clears throat> Would you keep our minds and ears and our hearts open to what's going on around us? Um, would we begin to see things through the lens of your, of your heart and your desire for us? Would we be reminded of just the simple truth of a song like Mama Tried, how it just, it's the truth, it's the, it's the outcome of, of what Solomon is trying to teach us. We can... We can learn, we can listen to others, we can grow wise through others' instruction and wise choices, or we can choose the path of selfishness and rebellion, and we will suffer the consequences. Um, so help us to examine our hearts today and make sure we are making those wise choices. Make sure we're listening Make sure we remind ourselves we have two ears and one mouth. Remind ourselves to, to not have to be talking about everybody or everything, but rather lifting up the truths of your word and your will and your way. Um, so, Father, help us to be a, um, a tree of life today, whatever that means, whatever that looks like in our individual situations. Um, help us to be a blessing as we walk in your ways. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Good to see you this morning. Uh, 
Todd and Joni and Sherry and Elaine and Reggie, thanks for joining us. Um, hope you guys have a great day and just pay attention to what's going out there. And uh, today's the day for something good. So be on the lookout. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.